<laughs> Can I pour you some tea? I'd love some tea. This is chamomile with my some favorite tea. root and peppermint, I think. Oh, okay. It's pretty hot. There you Very go. Nice. So good. Go. Thank you. It's called Don't Worry, Be Happy. Is the name <laughs> of the blend. I love this tea. <laughs> Very nice. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Lovely. So uh, we've invited you here today yes. to explore the idea or topic or concept or theme that we have in our permanent collection show that's up, oh. going to be up at the gallery. Um, it's called Community Watch. And we really wanted to have a chance to talk to artists about the role that community has played in their lives, in their practice, in their work. What has it meant to you? Oh, I think community is huge. It's absolutely huge. If, uh, if I want to make something, I, I think I have an obligation in some way to have that piece uh, be accessible to the people who are going to see it without art speak, mm -hmm. you know, that there will be some direct response to the work. So I, I am for, I, I'm all about community. And there's no sense making an artwork if it's going to sit under your bed or in your studio. So for me, part of making work is to make work that will speak to the people around me, here, where I am. Mm -hmm. And then once that's done, then to move that work you know, once I've made the work, it's moved the work out so that people get to experience it. I want the work in the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite happy if that world is my immediate community. I don't need it to be bigger than that. I'm happy that you said that because I've been thinking about the artwork that is in the Community Watch exhibition that we have mm -hmm. of yours. So it's the Cygnus spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy. <laughs> exactly so, the opposite of exactly. what I just so said. Exactly. So that was my next question. You let, you leaned into it perfectly. So I know that you care for constantly care for your local community and I you're do. known for your work through education and your workshops and your presence and your teaching in our community which is small town mm -hmm. community. But at the same time in your work there is such a huge presence of something bigger. So how do those how do those work for you? Well, I thought about what would I say about Cygnus? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before we came today, um, that was a piece made when I was in my forties, uh, somewhere I think. I think about then, mm -hmm. um, and one of my questions to myself then at that point was how do I feel connected? So the question I was exploring was how do, how do I feel connected to everything, to, to the bigger, to the bigger picture? Being, a, 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 you know, an artist who lives in rural Saskatchewan, yeah. being connected is an issue on many levels. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's what started. I did a whole show there of, of the cosmos. Um, and the other thing I was interested in in that show was how do you put words with images, which is another form of mm -hmm. communication, another form of connection. Um, so that was what I was working with there, is how do you, how do I begin to feel connected at that level? Mm -hmm. You know, where was my place? And then after that level, the next level, of course, then is, is how do you then how do you communicate that to other people, which is really what I have then spent my time being. And how do I place my work? And how do I place myself in my community? And how do I place myself on the planet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the next level down is the planet. Yeah. You know, and how, how do you... So then I thought, oh, for me to understand my place in that at that level, at the level of the planet, we've done the cosmos and the you know and the solar system, and now we move down to the you know to the um, to the Earth level. Yes. Right. 
And that's actually where I have spent most of my time. There's, there is certainly a spiritual present, you know, uh, component to all of my work. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. It's, it's a need to feel connected. What I do when I finish a work, and I think it's done, then I, I say goodbye to it. Uh, it's, it's a conscious part of me to having the photographing section mm -hmm. done of my okay. images yeah. because you're in, you're in a quiet setting you know you've got lights the room is darkened you have somebody taking a picture and you have just spent you know if you're doing an exhibition and you're now doing a dozen works then you've just spent a day and a half fluffing every single piece to have them be ready to go to the prom yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know it's, <laughs> it's that set yeah. so then what you do is you I sit there and we put it up and I sit back there, and I say goodbye. Mm -hmm. And I move it out into the world. So when I see it in the world, I like to know where, I like to know where the pieces are. Mm -hmm. uh, and I go, oh, well, look at it there. And doesn't that look nice? Or it, they always, they're always influenced by their context. Mm -hmm. You know, when a piece is hung, where it hung mm -hmm. affects the work. Yep. And the work affects the area. I mean, if, if it's a yes. good, if it's a good match, you know. So, I I, I reconnect mm -hmm. with the piece, and I, and when I say goodbye, I've done. The, I know I have done the best I can for that piece. Yep. If I haven't, I haven't let go. Yeah. It. It. You know. I. I only pieces I like leave my studio. <laughs> so that's really special. That that you go through that process. I think that's really important, that amount of care that you show that you can then feel with every work that moves out into the world. But I usually think about, um, I spent a lot of time thinking about the vulnerability of artists when you put your a piece of yourself or one of your creations out there into the world. And when I hear you talk, I'm just thinking about this, the larger concept, the amount of trust that you have in community and into the world to allow these pieces out, to send them out. There is such a large amount of trust that you must have that they're gonna be cared for. Well, I just have it. Yeah. It's true, I simply have it. It's such a beautiful <laughs> thing, um, um, yeah. I, I think one of a, a, a revelation I had, again, many, many, many years ago, was um, I used to say, my work is my soul. And then I realized it, the revelation was, is that it is not my soul. It's my soul's work. Mm -hmm. That I am intact. And I bring, I bring whatever it is I do, I can bring to yeah. the work. And we do, the, and I do the work. We do the work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do the work. And then, I leave it and out it goes. And I really do, I do have, you know, if, I think they will make their way mm -hmm. because I've embedded things in it. Yeah. And it's a life force. It is. I believe in that life force of the object. I think that's what's driven me for all these years through the work that I've done at the gallery too, yes. is you can feel it and you want to share it. Mm -hmm. You want to learn from it and you want to connect to it and grow from it yes. and it is very um it runs uh the opposite to often the construct that we set up at an art gallery at an art museum and these white walls and the conversation about the story and the life of the objects can although those objects are going to be cared for and that is an important role of the museum i still struggle with allowing the works to have that that life of their own mm -hmm. because for me that's when they truly become a part of the spirit of community right yeah right. it's a hard one <laughs> well i think one of the reasons i ended up in in textiles and in fabric is i think we have such an intimate feeling and we're, we've been wrapped in cloth since we've been born mm -hmm. you know of one kind or another and so i think when you make an artwork out of that uh, what people do is they bring that other kind of knowledge about the material, mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, to the work. 
Yeah. They just will respond to a quilt differently than they will respond to a welded steel sculpture. That's true. Yeah. And that is where you started. And that is where <laughs> I started. That's absolutely right. <laughs> wow. So you're making your artwork in a studio at your home in mm -hmm. small town Saskatchewan. And you've mentioned that you were in Toronto and you've, you had come to Saskatchewan. I'm wondering about the role that community has played in your life and how it's informed your practice in terms of the people that you've been surrounded by. How, how, how has that um, changed or grown or morphed over time? Does it influence your work? Oh, absolutely. And if so, how? Um, hmm. Well, I'd just like to say I grew up in Saskatchewan. You know, I left at 17, never to return. <laughs> and went to Seattle, you know, studied yeah. there. That's where the sculpture came from. Mm -hmm. uh, ended up in Toronto because I was still never going to come to be, live in Saskatchewan. And then I came back. Mm -hmm. And when I came back, I, well, what was I going to do here? And now here I am, out in a small little town, really two and six and a half million people to 43 is what I moved down to. Mm -hmm. Took a few years of do the, <laughs> to get that adjustment made. Wow. <laughs> but one of the things I did when I came back is I thought, I don't really know where I, you know, I don't know this place. You know? So I, I did a tour all the way through where my parents had, were, had been brought up right across the whole very bottom part of Saskatchewan. I did that and I came back. And my first textile exhibition was called What I Did on My Summer Vacation. And it was this trip oh, based oh. on this trip across. And I realized across the prairies, and I thought, yes, I need to connect with this environment. And along with connecting with the environment is connecting with the people mm -hmm. and figuring out how I fit in you know, and so that's that's where it started. Mm -hmm. And how do I do this anyway? Yeah. <laughs> and how do you be an artist in Saskatchewan? Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. a beautiful way to to be connected through yeah. the the past and the lives of others and the, yeah. those histories. It is so rich here on the prairies. That got me going. That got me, you know, grounded in it. Mm -hmm. And then I and I'm still. I I did, did um I did a show in 2005 about the elevators, mm -hmm. when the elevators came, you know, the all elevators were, dis were uh, all disintegrating mm -hmm. and, uh, and were disappearing. Mm -hmm. And um, they, came to di they came to the town I live in and... Oh, and it disappeared? It disappeared in a week. And I'd never been in an elevator. I've lived, I lived here all these years. I'd never been in an elevator. But boy, I sat there along with everybody else in town all week our arms on our pickup trucks, watching the elevator come down and saying, um, oh, well, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And finally I said, oh no, this is not okay. 19 rolls of film later, it was that long ago that we were still doing film, um, I, I thought, I have to do something about this. Mm -hmm. So I started really studying that and I did, I did that whole show based on, on the influence that that elevator had. It was the thing that grounded us as a province and as people in the mm -hmm. southern part anyway, was that very strong, um, that strong, you're never lost. You, all you have to mm -hmm. do is get out of your car, out of your truck, stand in the back of your pickup truck, look around and you can find an elevator and you know where to go. Yeah. I've spent a number of years now learning about prairie and doing pieces and working with with our relationship to the natural world. What is our place in that very complex and elaborate, mm -hmm. you know, community? It's a different kind of community. It is, it is a different kind, but it is a very important one. It is a community. It is, it is, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The scene that can happen when artists gather, um, a community of artists, have you felt like you've been a part of that growing up here? Um, or have you found it in other ways? I, I think I think there's there's a couple of things there. Um, 
I have often been desperately, I, I feel feeling desperately isolated in my um, medium mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that I haven't found an extended community of other artists doing it. I, I think it's absolutely essential that we have each other. Mm -hmm. And now during the COVID mm -hmm. and all the things happening now, we're, I, there's some extraordinary measures going on so that artists can just be in the same room and experience each other's energy mm -hmm. at one time. When, we're, when you're not dueling, yeah. you know, and being, you know, when you're actually all doing your work and there's just that creative energy in the room, there is nothing like it. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, I, I do a lot, I've taught a lot of workshops over the years. Mm -hmm. So when I think about community, I think about um, being in that room full of people learning and being creative together, um, each doing their own work. Maybe they're on a theme or there's an assignment or whatever mm -hmm. it is. But you know that there's a um, there's an energy that builds a mm -hmm. creative energy, and yes, it's wonderful to have other other women or for in my case other women because of my medium mostly. Mm -hmm. um, other women that I can just talk shop with. Yeah. You know, it's just so nice to do that. And the workshops always gave me that. Because mm -hmm. I, I taught the workshops all over the country. So I would fly somewhere. I So I'm isolated here in rural Saskatchewan. But then I would go someplace and here would be all these people who do the same thing I do. Well, my goodness, I would be on the moon, <laughs> right? And so that would happen and I would bring that back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now. That energy applies across media too. Mm -hmm. So I do have a circle of very supportive and wonderful artists that I communicate with regularly, mm -hmm. you know, here, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so between the two, the media based group yeah. <laughs> and then the a bigger creative group, we all, we're all in the same boat and we all do the same thing. Yeah. You know. yeah. Another thing that I think that's part of, of community and artists in community is um, I think I do two things. I think that I, um, I make art, you know, and I put the art in the world. And I think the other thing that I do is I build culture. Mm -hmm. And that I'm building culture when I'm doing a workshop. I'm sharing, I'm sh sharing skill sets. I'm talking about things on a creative level and on a skill level at that. And that there is a, and that creates a community with them. They get to learn that, and they get the common experience of learning things together, and uh, which I'm facilitating. But then what they do with it when I go is a whole different. It becomes its own culture and its own group of community. Mm -hmm. You know, a different kind of of community develops that way. And I think that that's a really important role of artists in community is to be out there sharing. Mm 